Hey, thank you, Matt. We're going to go back into a time of worship here in a few moments, but uh, I want to take a moment to open up the Word of God together with you all. And uh, I hope that everybody here had a wonderful Easter weekend, Resurrection Sunday weekend, and uh, it's time with your family, uh, celebrating the goodness of our God. You know, I just love the idea that it's like, you know what, it's such an important day. It's, it's more important in a lot of ways than Christmas. Why? Because we're reminded it was the death of Jesus on the cross that gives us hope in life today. And so that's what we were there to celebrate. And I hope you had a chance to celebrate with your families and grateful to have you all here uh, today with us. We're still on our series of key ingredients in the early church. And I thought it'd be important since we've been on it for a little bit. Um, to remind everybody, our goal in this is we are not trying to mimic uh, the styles or the methods of the early church, but rather we are trying to extract these important ingredients that were a part of the early church that still are important for the church today. And so that's been our, our journey through Acts. And if you haven't been with us, you can, you can always tune in online. Um, but we're going to be looking at Acts chapter 10, excuse me, Acts chapter 9 here this morning. Sorry, I'm thinking about next week in the back of my head. But we're actually looking at Acts chapter 9. Um, but I want to talk to you a little bit about this idea of revelation. This idea of revelation. This is an important thing to think about. Revelation, I want to, I want to put it in your minds right now, is an act of revealing or communicating divine truth. An act of revealing or communicating divine truth. So when we talk about revelation today, I want you to think about that from that perspective with me, okay? Um, The reality that we see in the book of Acts and all through scripture is that God wanted to spread the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ all around the world. That was his heart's desire because he loves people. That's why he sent his son, because God loves people and he wants to have relationship with each and every one of us. But the early church, they struggled a little bit. The apostles were having a pretty good time in Jerusalem. Great things were happening, but they weren't really spreading out. And then all of a sudden, Saul shows up on the scene. And Saul begins to persecute and punish and imprison the early church to the point that the church has no other choice but to scatter outside of Jerusalem and into Samaria. And as they make their way into Samaria, we learn about how Philip was committed to evangelizing and sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Samaria just exploded with growth of people coming to faith and to know Jesus and miracles and signs and wonders were happening all over the place. And so once persecution happened, the church began to do exactly what Jesus had instructed them to do, was to what? To go into Jerusalem and to Judea and to Samaria and what? And to the ends of the earth. And we learned about how the Ethiopian man in that time and in that perspective, being from Africa, he would have been seen as being somebody that came from the ends of the earth. And Philip was was a part of that process of that man coming to faith and carrying the faith at that known time, what? To the ends of the earth. But then God had a bigger plan. Why? Because he wanted all people included in his story. And God had a plan for this man named Saul, even though Saul was a man that hated the church, the very man that persecuted and was fighting against God. God had a plan for this man's life to turn the tide for thousands of years. It's still happening even yet today. Acts chapter nine, let's read. But Saul still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord. I mean, just just think about that for a moment here. Like, when was the last time you were so ticked off that you're like snarling, you know, you're just mad, you're just boiling over to the point that it's on your breath. And this is, this is where Saul was at. I mean, he was, he was outrageous. He was upset and he wanted to do something about it. Maybe in your younger years, you made some poor choices. Why? Because you got a little upset about something. That's why young people tend to start riots and, and are the ones that are trying to do crazy things. Why? Because sometimes they don't see what's in front of them. And Saul was, that's where Saul was at breathing threats and murder. Doesn't sound like a very godly man, does it? Went to the high priest and he asked him for letters to the synagogue at Damascus. So he was so mad. He went to the local authorities and he said, give me authority and I'm gonna take care of this mess. 
I'm gonna go round up every man, woman, and child that says anything about Jesus and I'm gonna, I'm gonna put them in chains and I'm gonna throw them in prison and we are gonna put this thing to bed once and for all. That's my translation, by the way. So that if he found any belonging to the way, men or women, that he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now as he went on his way, he approached Damascus and suddenly a light from heaven shone around him. I don't think it was like a flashlight. Hey, you ever drive at nighttime nowadays, and I don't know what they're thinking, but some of these headlights they're putting on these vehicles, I don't know about you guys, but I can't see for a good five seconds afterwards. So I'm always hoping and praying that when one of these fancy cars passes by and shines their beams in my eyes, I'm always hoping there's not a deer or a person or another car that's on the road because I can't see anything. But here it says that a light shone around him. And it said, and falling to the ground, he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, who are you, Lord? And he said, I'm Jesus. Well, can you just just take that in for a moment? Just seriously, take that in for a moment. This is, Jesus is the reason that that he's breathing murderous threats. Jesus, the one who healed the sick. Jesus, the one who restored the the sight to the blind. Jesus, the one that called Lazarus out of the grave after he'd been in the grave for four days. This Jesus, who was trying to share his love, the love of God to people. The one that Saul wanted to snuff out. And now he's on on, on the ground. He says, who are you, Lord? He says, it's Jesus whom you're persecuting. But rise and enter the city, and you'll be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, hearing the voice but seeing no one. Saul rose from the ground, and although his eyes were opened, he saw nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And for three days he was without sight, and he neither ate nor drank anything. I don't know about you, but I think if I had an encounter like that, I think I'd be a little shook up too. I can't imagine what might have been going through Saul's mind. You gotta remember, right? Saul was like a Pharisee of Pharisees. He was educated in Torah and all the all the scrolls of old. Like he knew the scriptures inside and out. And yet it was this Saul who was persecuting people that were trying to follow Jesus. And Jesus being the very son of God, the God that he thought he was serving has now made himself known to him. Wow, what a mind bender. Think about that for a moment. You see, Saul had something happen to him that I believe needs to happen to each and every one of us today. I'm not suggesting that you're gonna get a light shown on the road to Damascus, but I do think each and every one of us need to have a revelation of Jesus. You and I need to have a revelation of Jesus in our lives. I'm not talking about, it's one thing, you ever met somebody that's really like has a lot of knowledge? Like I have a sister-in-law, I should have asked her permission before I said this, but I have a sister-in-law that you should never play Jeopardy with or, or any type of trivia with ever in your life. Somehow she has managed to download everything there is to know on Google and she can just spout it right back. It's kind of like Tim Lindstrom. He's the same way. You talk to him in the car. He's, already, he's got information about everything. And I'm like, dude, are you like plugged into the internet? I mean, are you downloading right now? Like what's going on, right? I don't know where that was going, but that was fun. But we all need to have a revelation of Jesus. Now, some of you are sitting here thinking, well, I've had my revelation of Jesus and I'm following Jesus and praise God, that's awesome. But I don't think it's about having a one-time revelation. I think we need to have an ongoing revelation of Jesus throughout our entire lifetime. You know why? Because God is so big, he's so wide, he's so beyond our understanding that it's gonna take our lifetime here on earth and probably thousands of years beyond that to even begin to comprehend all that he has in store for you and me. Because that's just how big he is. And so we need to have a regular revelation of who Jesus is. 
I was telling my wife, I said, you know, in these last five years, if I was to say what was a revelation, a new revelation of Jesus, as I have realized over these last five years, is that God is serious about reconciliation and he can take the most broken of broken of broken relationships and guess what? In Jesus' name, he can mend and heal them because that's who he is. And guess what? I needed to have my eyes open and my heart touch in order to see and to understand that God has the power and the ability to work in those ways. And see, you and I need to continue to have fresh revelation of who Jesus is in your life and mine so that we can faithfully follow after him. So I want you to know God will do what is necessary. I really like this a lot because I gotta be honest, I think I'm a little thick in the head sometimes. I think sometimes instead of listening to a good advice or wisdom, or sound judgment, sometimes I think, oh, I'm gonna just figure it out for myself. And that is a long and bumpy road, and I've got scars to prove it, okay? But I want you to know something. God will do what is necessary to get your attention. You see, Saul, Saul thought he was there, guys. He thought he was there. He thought he had it all figured out, guys. You know what I love about God? is the moment you tell God you got it all figured out, he's like, actually, you don't know anything yet. (laughs) That's cute. (laughs) Good for you. (laughs) But here's the thing, guys. Jesus revealed himself to Saul, and it it was so beyond his understanding that he fell to the ground. Do you know that if God revealed to you everything that he is all about in a moment, you would die? You and I would fall to the ground as dead people and we probably wouldn't get back up. Why? Because you and I cannot handle the fullness of our God. He's that great. He's that big and we cannot handle that. But I want you to know something. God will do what is necessary to get your attention. And if you're a loving parent or grandparent in this room, you understand something about the willingness or the length or the distance that you would go for your son or your daughter. Why? Because your love for them. And I want you to know something. God loves you so much that he will go much further than mom and dad here on earth. Man, he will chase you to the ends of the earth because of what, because of his love for you. God will do what is necessary to get your attention. Proverbs 14, 12 reads this. There is a way that seems right to a man, but its ends is the way to death. There is a way that seems right to a man, but its ends is the way to death. This is why, guys, it's so important. Let me be clear today. I'm not challenging you to get out there and try to seek some new revelation. God's God's made it, it's available through his word, the Bible, the scriptures. But just because you read it and just because you know it doesn't mean that it's all been unveiled to you. This is why every time you go to the scriptures and you read, you're like, wait a minute, that wasn't there before. It's not because it's changed, it's because you've changed. It's because you're in another season of your life and guess what, God recognizes it and he understands it's time to unveil something new. Why? Because you're growing, you're maturing, you're developing, you're becoming the man or the woman or the child of God that he's called you to be. And so he's slowly unveiling more and more. That's why just like a great marriage, over the years, it gets better and it gets better and it gets better. Why? Because you, because you realize that love and that relationship and that intimacy that you share one with another. And over time, that just develops and it grows. And it's such a beautiful thing. And your relationship with God needs to be the same way. It's got to just keep developing. I don't know if you guys were ever fans of Shrek. Did you, anybody ever like Shrek? I thought Shrek was great, by the way. You know, and, and, and Shrek, is, he's an ogre. You know, he's an ugly dude, you know, and he's, he's expecting a little, bit of, a little bit of hate getting thrown his way all the time. But he, he talks about how, how ogres are like what? They're like onions because they have layers, right? You got to peel off the layers to see. And here's the thing, guys, there is so many layers to our creator and he's not ugly. He's beautiful and he's awesome and he's powerful and he's working on your behalf. So I want you to know something. God will do what is necessary to get your attention. Here, this is gonna hurt a little bit. God will let you walk through hard times if you need to, to get get your attention. God God will allow you to go through difficult things 
Things that you and I think, no, God couldn't do that. Oh, yes, he will. Why? Because he loves you too much. And he will do what is necessary to get your attention. The other thing I want to point out from our story here today, and I promise we're going to go back into a time of worship. My wife already threatened me. She said, I'll just turn the microphone off. I said, I'll just yell louder. So, (laughs) as I want you to know that God works through people. God makes himself known through the scriptures. God makes himself known through nature. We read about that in Romans. God makes himself known through what? People, other people. And, and I love this part of our story. Let's go right back to Acts 9 for a moment. Acts 9, 17. It says, Ananias departed and entered the house and laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road by which you came has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Was it the power of Ananias? Was it the power of Ananias that healed Saul? Was it the power of Ananias that filled him with the Holy Spirit? No, but God chose what? God chose to use Ananias to work through Ananias to deliver the healing that Saul needed in his life and to fill him with the Holy Spirit so that he could ultimately become the vessel, the the tool that God was going to use to reach and to shake the Gentile world. And I think it's important for you and I to understand sometimes is that God wants to work through people around you and I every single day. He also wants to work through you. And this is an important thing to grasp because it's not just about you and me. God meant for this journey to happen with, along with the community of Christ. We need each other, guys. You know, we went, I was was kind of bragging, we went to a game night last night, and I hadn't laughed that hard in a while. I had a headache afterwards. There was no consumption of alcohol, okay? We were just playing games. Don't get all serious. Come on, I'm being serious. Um, that, that reminds me of another story, but I'll tell that another time. But anyway, we had so much fun, and, and we left last night, and I, and I told my wife, I said, I said, I just feel so blessed to get to do life with people to laugh with them, to share this journey with them, because sometimes it's hard. But isn't it cool to know that there's a whole community of believers that wants to journey with you, that wants to cry with you, that wants to celebrate with you, that wants to pray for you, that wants to maybe help you in your time of need, whatever it might be, I want you to know God works and moves through people. And understand something, don't ever sell yourself short. If God gives you instruction to do something, just because scales don't fall off somebody's eyes, just because they don't fall down on the ground, or just because there isn't a miraculous healing, doesn't mean that God isn't working through you. You provide that meal. You show love, grace, and truth. You stand up for somebody. You don't know what God is doing through your life, but understand something. God is working through people and he's working through you and me. We all need a revelation of Jesus. And I want to kind of conclude with this thought this afternoon. Don't settle. You know, I, I've shared my story a lot and, I, and I, it's hard not to share it tonight because I felt like, oh man, I, it just feel, it feels like it works, you know. But here's the thing. You have a story. I have a story, right? God revealed himself to you at some point in your journey. Maybe you were at college. Maybe you were in high school. Maybe you are in middle school or grade school. Or maybe you were a, a, an adult. I remember my grandmother, she, she shared her story. She was like in her 30s when she gave her life to Jesus. It was the greatest choice that she ever made. And I, I believe my family's where they're at today because she gave her life to Jesus, because she was willing to follow after him, because he revealed himself to her. And guess what? It wasn't just one time. It was over and over again. You know how I know it? Because her love grew. Her love was so deep at the end of her days. I I promise you there was probably an indentation on the floor of her room near her bed where she constantly knelt down and prayed and talked to her heavenly father. We all need a revelation of Jesus. And if you haven't had that revelation in a while, maybe it's because you need to get right back on track with him. 
Maybe you need to stop messing around or moping through the trial that you're walking through and, and step up and say, okay, God, I'm ready, let's go. And I just wanna encourage you with that here tonight. We're gonna go back into a time of worship. Why don't you pray with me? And uh, man, we got a great meal prepared downstairs. I hope that if you're up for it, you'll come join us afterwards and eat some great food and hopefully laugh a little bit. Hopefully not too much crying, but some laughing would be good. Father in heaven, I just wanna thank you this, this afternoon for the opportunity, God, to share your precious word. God, I thank you for what you did in Saul's life. Lord, how you knocked him off his feet to the ground so that he could have a revelation of who you are. God, I pray today here, here in this room, God, I, I'm asking, Lord, would you knock some of us off of our feet? God, maybe some of us have gotten a little comfortable. Maybe some of us have gotten a little complacent or numb. And God, we need, to, we need to have that fresh revelation because God, we forgot that not only did you reveal yourself, but you have, you've called us and you have a plan and a purpose for our lives. And Lord, we gotta be faithful just like Ananias to say yes to you when, you when you ask us to do something and to walk in that obedience. So God, I'm praying today for some fresh revelation. Make yourself known, I pray. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.